The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor, WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Welcome back, everyone, here live in Silicon Valley for Hadoop Summit 2014. We're actually in San Jose. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. I'm joined with Jeff Kelly, a big data analyst at Wikibon.org. And our next guest is Richard Morris, founder and CDO, Chief Data Officer at Traseda. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. No, thank you. It's great to be here. We love having Abiana, also your uh, co-founder. Uh, you guys are unique in the sense that you're innovative and disrupting, and you're pioneering the application market for sure. big data, and you're taking sure. a, a view of not being an infrastructure container, but you're really about app software exactly. around data. So yeah. tell, us, tell us around the founding, why, why the founding of Traseda, what was the vision behind it, and, and what, why your role as chief data officer is so central to that vision? Yeah, sure, well, we, I mean, one of the key principles, we really believe that uh, uh, data is a key uh, strategic asset of uh, really every company and that uh, the explosion of data and then the new technologies we're now going to turn over the entire, uh, really, infrastructure stacks across all industries. Uh, we also had a real clear view that uh, we believe vertical applications were the way to go, and really the, the reason between that is you see a tremendous amount of variety of data. And you need to understand and be an expert in that data uh, on a vertical nature for specific applications to be able to build a credible application. And, and that's the real, uh, kind of one of our core principles, and that's the function of, uh, of uh, our data engineering yeah, team. Yeah, ever since we met Abby and, and worked with you guys, even before you guys started the company, we've always been a big vision of, uh, have the same vision of this vertical focus, right. because we're in the media business, where right, right. You know, it's vertical media, yeah, right? Exactly. So, so yeah. now with the world being instrumented exactly. around data, you can yeah. actually go in and use data to precisely get things and get information and build around that in a way that's unique. Yeah. Uh, it's always been hard in the past, so, so explain to the folks out there why now, why is big data enabling this, really a capability of something that we've never seen before? Well, I mean, uh, uh, what we do is we, we build what we call a data index, and we do that by the industry verticals or the applications we have, and that data index is able to essentially uh, um, uh, bring the unique aspects of data in that specific application. And so it can get taken, that application can get taken across many, many, many companies, but with inside that vertical application. And that's what the key is, because uh, if you're in um, uh, you know, a credit lending business and the type of data and what you're allowed to do with it uh, is completely different than you for in healthcare, mm -hmm. with the different laws and regulations and the type of specifics there. And it's really not credible to think that uh, we as a company could just generically build an application that would be fine to look at uh, genome research versus should I lend money on a car? I mean, as absurd as that is, but that's kind of, unless you build these vertical applications, that's what you're really mm -hmm. implying you can do. And so to do that, you really need the, you've got to have the business domain knowledge to, to be able to do that. So, um, you know, Abi talked yesterday on theCUBE about how you know, he's got essentially his head of sales is really a banker at heart. Exactly. And, and can talk to the, to, to the financial exactly. services institution. Um, how do you go about, I mean, that's a, what, what you're trying to do uh, makes a lot of sense holistically, but it's a, it's a big job bringing together uh, you know, the, the technical knowledge, the mm -hmm. science, the business domain, and, and building these applications that are actually you know, going to move the needle with these companies. How do you go about building a company like that? Well, I mean, one, you've got to pick your verticals correctly. Mm -hmm. So you need, uh, you know, you, you can't uh, try and build one size fits all. So pick the, the specific vertical where you believe that the market size, well, first of all, there's a major problem that hasn't been solved before, that really bringing this technology and the data together is going to do something that hasn't been done before. It's not kind of a champion challenger you know, let's do it a little bit faster, cheaper, and turn the dial a little bit. Mm -hmm. Really, what are these verticals that are going to completely change over? The business models are going to change as you bring the technology and data together. And then that uh, those market sizes are enormous in themselves. So, you know, where verticals are there, where you can sell, you know, build once and sell many, many, many times down that vertical. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your title, Chief Data Officer. Mm -hmm. So, talk a little bit about that role. Um, you know, well, what does a chief data officer do in a company like yours, and, and what are you seeing, uh, but more generally as a, a chief data officer at, at your client organizations, what, what's the role of the CDO? 
Well, I think uh, we're seeing the client organizations a wide uh, definition of that. Uh, but I think, uh, and that's evolving and getting defined uh, depending on what client organization it is. But specifically inside uh, Traceda, uh, we run a data engineering team, which really allows the building of what we call data indexes. Mm -hmm. And so that's uh, what we build our software product around. Uh, so that it can uh, go through a vertical application and be sold across many companies inside that same vertical. And it is scalable across that. That's what we see as what we call a data index. And that's a, a very, very core part of our IP inside our product. Mm -hmm. So from, from what you're seeing uh, out in the field and, and customers and prospects, mm -hmm. uh, are you seeing a lot of organizations that, that actually have uh, created the CDO role? Um, you mentioned it's kind of, it's, yeah. it's evolving, it's yeah, developing. Yeah, yeah. And, it's and we've brought the cube uh, last summer, mm -hmm. we're going to be there again. Uh, next month at the uh, MIT uh, Chief Data right. Officer Summit. Um, and we talked a little bit about that, talked to some uh, Chief Data Officers and some, some of the larger healthcare organizations, right, financial right. services organizations. Um, but I'm curious from your perspective, are you seeing the CDO role become more prominent or, or more sure. uh, popular across well, different verticals? In fact, I think just about all companies we deal with would have a CDO. I think the type of person that is in there and their actual role is different and evolving. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a recognition now uniformly that data is a core strategic asset of any company. Mm -hmm. And the business, it will drive a, a, a tremendous change in the business model. Mm -hmm. And so some CDOs are more governance orientated mm -hmm. and facilitators, and others are actually building real data assets. Mm -hmm. uh, some central and some uh, you know, uh, distributed That's uh, in organizations. And, and, and we see, and, and I think because it's new, that's evolving. And it depends on the culture of each company. Mm -hmm. And, and, and how do you see the relationship between the CDO and the CIO? Does, do the CDOs, should they be reporting to the CIO or should they be on par with the CIO? You know, I think, um, one is I think naturally you have to work in a matrix when you're dealing with this thing. So yeah. I think th that structure doesn't solve the problem. I think a lot of people go after these things and say, look, if we don't like what, what's happening and we're frustrated that something's not happening, let's just reorganize the company from a structure point of view. And it's just the same chairs getting moved around and you've got the same frustrations, right? So you need to be able to, I think, have uh, that role today starts with being able to very much work with inside a matrix. Mm -hmm. Uh, some good, uh, good people are people who actually understand how to get things done and are good executors in a company, so they know they, that they have the right relationships with the CTO, the CIO, the business leaders, mm -hmm. very important, and they're able to bridge that. But if some of that is very person specific, mm -hmm. so it's not a very easy prescriptive saying, this is great, here's a title, here's a reporting relationship. Go fix all, <laughs> all the data and infrastructure problems that have existed right. over the last 30 years. It's just not realistic. But the people who we see are very good have actually a strong execution background. They might have done a Basel III implementation, but they have the relationships and the context and they know how to get things done and execute. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they start out with, and they can get something done. They can build a data asset. They can focus on a use case. They can deliver value and get credibility between business and uh, the technology organization and bridge that. Uh, and those are the things we see powerful because success, the one thing we really see when you, this is so transformative, mm -hmm. the business case is well executed. You're not sitting around deciding was this good or bad. It, it feeds on itself and says, how do you do more? How does this get implemented more broadly across the organization? But I, you know, I, it's so new and organizations and culture and how things get done, I think people are taking different, different approaches to it. So one of the things we talk about the, on the um, Chief Data Officer, Dave Vellante and I and, and, and Jeff, always debate is innovation, right? Mm -hmm. Innovation is going to come from organic growth, yeah. seeing new opportunities, and big data gives you the freedom and to right. see new data sets, as well as as a compliance question, right? Sure. So old school, uh, data governance, oh, lock the mm -hmm. data down. Right. And so you have this, this challenge. How do you right. talk to customers who want to be cutting edge, mm -hmm. be agile, super agile, right. build new things, right. but also maintain compliance? Because you have right. you know, control, and then you have kind of organic innovation. How do you, how do you talk about those two things? Well, I, you know, that's what their job is. I mean, there's, uh, you've got to be able to, you know, <laughs> the tensions between those two, and that's what the good people, the good executors can manage that. And uh, that differentiates the good from the, uh, the not so good. I will say one thing that, um, I would say uniformly, uh, the business models that we see in our clients have to change. So there isn't a discussion of, let's keep the existing and add a little bit of innovation around the site. This is really getting into the heart of changing their business model. The margins are going down, people are going online. I mean, the complete change of costs 
and the pricing points that they're in. They're not making as much money as they used to. Uh, that's the imperative to change. Uh, as you sit there, the good uh, organizations can manage that, keep tight controls of governance, but being able to pick the right use cases and the right uh, uh, implementations of innovation that's getting the real results that businesses look and go, well, that's fantastic. What kind of best practice have you seen of successful folks that do this right? What are some of the things, the patterns that you see, take that big data approach, what are Great. some of the, the things that you see executing well on the tactical side to manage, those, manage that successfully? I think they keep this, their, their uh, teams uh, uh, nimble, uh, they keep them small, uh, they focus uh, and they're able to build, have very good partnerships and understanding and respect uh, with the business, but also with the technology organizations. Uh, and you need both, uh, but keep the, 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 the group small and nimble. Focus on uh, building a data asset first, and then build you know, one or two you know, very high use case uh, 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 actual uh, pilots. Then you're going to get, then, then the, uh, we see that the, the order list comes the other way. The business is saying, listen, I went to market with this, and, and here's what I closed. I need this, this, and this. And the good ones are actually now taking, filtering the next list of projects that they've got to get done. What are the big challenges that you see? Uh, what's the barriers uh, for adoption? Because it sounds like it's an education validation mode. So when you talk about POCs, they want to be conservative because usually, certainly in financial yeah. services, we talk to Avi about this all sure. the time, data is the core asset, as you yeah, mentioned. Absolutely. That's okay, so you don't want to just spill the jewels in the lobby, so to speak, and just like screw everything up. So people probably take a conservative approach. Educate, validate, and then expand. Where are we in that life cycle from your perspective? We, it really depends uh, by client. I mean, we, we have, you know, we've had our software in production for two years at some places, uh, and you know, they are, uh, uh, th to be quite frank, they wouldn't come to this event because it'd be like, they're feeling like they've gone back 10 years. <laughs> uh, you know, because it's all about tools and, and piping and infrastructure, and they're all around applications and making money and changing their business model. Yeah. Uh, and, and then other people are just starting the journey. And, and, and you, get the, the, this, the, you get the wide spectrum of that. So, there, so the folks that don't come to the event, they're yeah. looking for the tools to come out of here. They're not in here participating, so to speak, is that exactly. right? Exactly, yeah, and, and their expectation is, is those tools uh, are getting built, and they, look at, and they look at where the community's going, what have you, but it's not. It's, it's, it's not the reason they're, they're, they're investing in building, right? To know this Are you seeing home grown? Home grown has been a big part of like, the, we go back to the mainframe, right. I guess it's a great example. Right. You know, spaghetti code we used to call it. I'm, the, from the, I'm not that generation, but you know, right. they build their own in-house code. Right. Now you're seeing that uh, kind of same philosophy. Do you see folks building on top of these open source framers, building their own homegrown stuff? Mm -hmm. and, and what does that do to their business model? They have to obviously hire developers, obviously, right? What, uh, the homegrown is nearly always taking an existing process and just porting it across. And so that's more the uh, faster, cheaper, which is great because, um, you know, look, budgets are, are going down and, and even just crimping the, 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 the growth and, 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 you know, the traditional technology, that's great, but it tends to be taking, you know, a credit risk process uh, and then just taking it across there and, and, and that's something that's, you know, great value and you get in there. But the, the kind of the thing that's driving the real innovation though is coming, is coming in the application from, from uh, the, the bringing in the innovation from the application providers. Um, so we'd love to, love to have you kind of size up your competition a little bit. And so sure. the first part of that is, well, well, what competition? There aren't a lot of big data application vendors out there right now, but um, you know, the ones that, the, some of the mega vendors are kind of mm -hmm. getting into this market mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, you know, you've got IBM, you think maybe Watson and some of the applications are trying to build there. Um, you know, I think SAP with trying to build some of their applications on top of HANA to take advantage of the, the, the speed, if not the, the scale of the data. I mean, how, how do you look at this landscape right now? Um, I mean, you're, you're kind of, you must be a little bit lonely. There aren't really any other startups that are focusing specifically on applications for vertical uh, use cases. Um, how do you kind of look at this landscape? Uh, well, it's exactly right. I mean, we were, um, Avi and I both uh, sit and look at each other and go, what, what are we missing here where the, the really aren't application companies, and uh, you know, Mike Olson, I think two years ago said, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and I, and I think truly now, uh, I, I think the next uh, 18 months, we will see a lot more applications uh, come in there, and I know everyone laughs when, when people see that, but uh, no, it, it, uh, there are some days where you whether, wonder whether, whether we're wrong and, and everyone else is right, <laughs> and we, sh we should be building, uh, you know, widgets for infrastructure. But uh, no, I don't think we've ever, 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 ever wondered that. But um, 
But what do you think about, about those mega vendors, the application vendors of, yeah. of yesterday? Uh, can they move into the future and to today and tomorrow, the, at the IBMs of the world, SAP, Oracle, can they, can they transform their approach you know, to applications to fit this big data paradigm, do you think? You know, I mean, I, I mean, that's, I mean that's the big question. I mean, uh, my guess is some will and some won't. Uh, I, I, mean, uh, I think they will look very different in five years than they do today. Uh, the great companies will be able to transform and do that. I think the biggest thing uh, that they, it, tremendously difficult to turn a, a mega ship, mm. you know, five degrees. It's just very hard to do that. Having said that, the market is so enormous uh, that, it, it, that they have no choice and, and it will become, the, I think, the sole focus of what they have to do. Mm -hmm. The good ones that are very driven, that have the good leadership, with, you know, then it's not hard to guess who those are. You know, we'll, we'll do that and, and, and they'll look very differently and, and, and be actually probably better companies than they are today. Mm -hmm. And others, are, uh, you know, will go the way that we've seen many of big providers go over the last 30 years. Yeah. Um, another topic that, uh, that John and I briefly touched on in our intro earlier uh, was, was the cloud and delivering mm -hmm. applications as a service in the big data space. You know, we haven't seen a lot of uh, talk at this show about uh, the mm -hmm. use of cloud, but you know, in our data that we're getting back from the Wikibon community, there's 56% you know, of, of respondents to our recent survey said they're using big data, uh, sorry, the cloud in some aspect of their big data deployment. Um, what's your approach at Traceda to delivering either as a service or delivering on premise? Do you have a, a do you do both? What's, what's your approach and, and, and your um, thoughts just on the, the, the value of the cloud as it applies to big data? Yeah, we, we do both, but it's uh, private cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we know we have, um, you know, uh, you know a major global financial institution uh, essentially has a private cloud. It's completely within their firewall, uh, but you know they uh, they have it as a service, uh, fully as a service. And I think that's a very powerful model, to be honest, because I think these companies have to focus on. They've got so much to change. They have to focus on what their real core asset is that they have to focus on, and 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 you know uh, get better providers focusing on what they're good at, and and and. You know, that's when we talk about how do these large enterprise players behind us change. Mm -hmm. Our large clients are doing, having to do exactly the same thing. And so we're able to focus their efforts where they really differentiate with their clients and get providers to do other things is, is just part of what they have to do. Well, yeah, I mean the reason I ask that is because it seems to me there's a, um, a similar benefit to kind of the, the approach that Shorset is taking uh, that generally speaking the cloud can provide and that is abstracting away some of that complexity of all the technology and tools sure. underneath, delivering some value in the form of an application and letting your client organizations focus on their business and Absolutely. what they do best, and we, not be a, a Hadoop shop, be a bank, be a retailer. And we, we have exactly that, largest, most complex companies. Uh, what they will not do is uh, ship it out to a public cloud. Uh, right. It's just not going to happen. Um, we, don't, we don't even see, I, I, I'm looking back, I'm not sure there's ever been a even a, even a chink to even have a discussion <laughs> on that. But having yeah. said that, is it, you described a very different model than what a lot of these large companies have been mm -hmm. built on, even with a, uh, a private cloud. Yeah. It's a very different model absolutely. to do exactly what you said. And, yeah. and we, we absolutely see that. So I was just talking about this compliance thing, we're getting some questions uh -huh. on here. So the one is that, can you give a specific example of a verticals where the, it's different, where you guys have been able to provide a solution for where, um, uh, like say, with healthcare versus financial, mm -hmm. um, where you guys have delivered value uh, with Traceda's approach, um, and how easy has it been to move from different verticals to different verticals? So the question coming from CrowdChat mainly is around, uh, how sure. easy is it to move from verticals? No, you need domain expertise. Absolutely. So can you describe how you yeah. guys move from verticals to verticals? Exactly, so well, we, we started uh, financial services, which itself is a, an enormous, uh, is, a, is a whole series of verticals. Uh, so even with inside that, between the consumer space uh, to the commercial space uh, to the wealth management space, and with inside that, we sub-segment uh, sub that. Um, but the common there is financial data is a common element across all of that. And so we are able to have domain knowledge uh, that it's reasonably transferable across that. Uh, interesting, we uh, have, uh, I think about six or eight months ago, uh, moved into retailing in grocery. Uh, and again, uh, we were able to leverage our knowledge of financial data uh, in the grocery space is a tremendous, you know, a lot of uh, transactional, it's transactional data, a lot of it is transactional data in, in nature. So you'd go adjacent markets where you have yeah. some leverage, so obviously financial exactly. data mean credit cards, obviously purchasing. Exactly. Everyone, but, well, not everyone, but the vast, vast majority of people will purchase with, like credit card, debit cards, or 
So Avi, or, Avi uh, Mehta said on theCUBE yesterday that just say there's going to be a disruptive and they're going to disrupt how enterprise software gets built and deployed. Right. What does he mean by that? Well, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I usually listen to his things here to try and guess this. No, like it's one of the things that we truly, Avi and I truly was one of our core tenants when we started, is we really, uh, as, as buyers of some of that, just could not, it really it was just such a disappointing experience. But when we think about vertical nature and now it's data, you have to have an inherently domain expertise to be credible in it. It's not the old uh, way of the old salesperson who said, would you like a cup of coffee and I'll give you some tickets to the football. That is just not useful at all. Um, you have to be able to go in and be very credible and talk to somebody about what their pain points are, what they understand about compliance, what regulatory controls, governance controls and what really are, and, and to be build a, a scalable product that incorporates that. Because we want to build once and sell many, many, many times inside those verticals. A, a traditional sales model, enterprise sales model, is, is quite frankly worthless. You guys are very impressive. We've been very impressed with what you guys are doing. Because you're doing the app side, which is not so much the infrastructure and the containers and the, mm. and the storage and all whatnot. So we have uh, some other good friends that I've interviewed at uh, mm. Factual, Gil Albez and Tyler Bell, he runs product. Sure. And, and, and Gil was the inventor of AdSense from Google. Mm -hmm. They're building out a big data company, but he, he, they talk about this notion of all the folks building technology really don't have any experience with data. Right. They're not data guys. Right. They're like infrastructure, containers, right. And, right. and tooling. Right. When you right. got companies that are data full, right. they have data all the time, so their view is different. Can you talk about the dynamics, as you kind of hinted that earlier, that the folks that you sell to don't necessarily come to the show because they're not in the infrastructure business, but a lot of folks here, mm -hmm. they're not data guys. They're really not living yeah. and breathing massive data. They're yeah. infrastructure guys. Yeah, and uh, so I think there's two things on that. One is uh, we, we were having this conversation a couple of nights ago and, and someone who was a you know, very well-respected person in the West, you know, right, you know, right here said, there aren't data people here. And so, unless the, 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 you know, the obvious places that have yeah. tons of data, but not in our space. There's just no data people here. And there's a reason why we built the company in, in, on the East Coast, is that's where the, uh, the data expertise is. Well, certainly financial services, their data, they're like fat with data. I mean, they're like, we yeah. explode with data. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, that's all they are. They're, there's nothing else. I mean, I mean, my daughter, when I worked in banking, it's, it dropped me off at the office, and she goes, well, what are you doing there? And it was like, hey, well, that's a kind of a tricky question. Yep. I mean, well, it's just Beard, data Rob, and ele uh, you know, electrons moving around, <laughs> I mean, that's it. Well, Rob Beard is clearly we said on theCUBE uh, yesterday, obviously the tsunami of data is coming into the enterprise yeah. at, at unprecedented levels, and you know, Jeff's documented that in his research. Um, so I got to ask you, where are we in the innings? We like to use the baseball analogy, since baseball's in season, uh, and the Bruins are out of the Stanley Cups, so we can't use the hockey analogy, skating through where the puck is, but baseball, what inning are we in? Right now, are we with respect to the data officer and the and this notion that data is a programmable asset or or you know workable as a key asset? Is it still really really early? I mean, has the game has begun? Is it where are we in that in that spectrum of? You know? I think we're in a very exciting time because I think there are some uh, companies, and I know directly our clients there, that are actually quite deep into the game, which means they've 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 dealt with these basic uh, platform issues several years ago, they're out, they have delivered real results, and these are in production, and this is changing their business process, it's being automated. And it's not a cost play. Yeah, it is, mm -hmm. it is cheaper and faster, but they are, they are winning business versus their competitors. They're driving revenue. They are driving revenue versus their competitors, they're increasing share, and they're documenting it. So those players, I would consider a deep in here. Now they're taking that now across other use cases. They're starting to change their business model. But I would say, you know, there are others who are, you know, they're stretching. Well, that's consistent with you Jeff, Jeff Kelly's survey. They're just stretching, you know? Jeff, your survey well, had specifically three questions. Uh, big data drivers obviously drive cost reduction. That was like 20, 21 percent or so, and, and right. exclusively. And then one on the competitive advantage front, which right. that we were referring to, is right. was like 24 percent, but the both, was 54% roughly in that yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff you, you agreeing with that? Yeah, I think we, you know, you're either doing this to save money, make money, or both. Yeah. And if you're, if you're only doing it for, to save money, you're missing a huge opportunity. And, it, and that's a, we see you know, a lot of practitioners, especially the ones who are you know, putting in Hadoop and, you know, themselves and kind of becoming a Hadoop shop. You know, they say, well, all right, well I, can, I can bring in Hadoop, I can offload some workloads from 
my, my data warehouse and I can save some money and then hopefully I can use that savings to fund some actual innovative work that's going to make me some money. So you're kind of using that saving money to get started, but right. ultimately, if that's all you're doing, yeah. you're, you're not taking advantage of these capabilities. It's about making, it's about creating new, new lines of business, new ways of doing business. And, and if you're not taking, if you're not, if that's not your goal. And incorporating new data, data, yeah. data sets into your, into your business model. Yeah, if you're I just mean, trying to do it faster, yeah. a little cheaper, yeah. I think you're missing a huge but, opportunity. You know, as we had a you know a product announcement today, three you know three, our three you know, uh, three point three version. That's you know that is pulling in you know a tremendous rich data set mm -hmm. at a an individual entity level, and you know being able to make and, and, and model and, and get into your application. Uh, data that never existed, it was never bought in before, mm -hmm. is, is a huge advantage. And that's not driving costs down. It's, it's extremely cost efficient to do that, and it's fast, right. but you're doing that to compete in the marketplace. Yeah, and I think there, need, yourself. there does need to be more education around. I think people, there's a, there's a mindset change that needs to happen. Uh, people are so used to saying, well, this is the data that's available to me, and that's all I have available. The I idea that, that you're limited now is, is gone. You've got to, you've got to change your mindset. A, absolutely, you, you assume you know, storage is free, compute's infinite, what problem would you solve? How would you, what business would you do? Right. You get in that mindset, and, and, and by the way, you talk about who differentiates, they're the clients that get it. They're the mm -hmm. ones who are getting this thing. They're not, I've got to save X million in my target. Let's go beat down a few vendors and move something across there. It's, right. That's not going to win. Richard um, Morris. But, but I would just want to say okay. one thing. I think sure. we're really doing ourselves a disservice in the community and, and, and the people behind us here when we represent Hadoop as a storage platform. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to kind of, not we, but kind of tread carefully around the different players. If we can all live together and it's a storage mm -hmm. platform. It isn't. And I don't think we do ourselves a favor of doing that. It is not. And it's, it, it's not just about storage. It's not. It's actually. Yeah, uh, and that's why you were talking about this, this to show being data full and being yeah. with data as an application, also the buyers. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we're here with Richard Morris, the co-founder of Traceda, the chief data officer. I'll give you the final words. Share with the folks in your own words right now um, uh, the future. How do you see the future evolving with respect to uh, how data will infiltrate and change those business models? What things will materialize? What will be some of those new experiences, new expectations? Obviously the competitive advantage you touch on is, is critical. It's still early days, some are deep in the game, 20-some percent, still huge numbers to drive that forward. What's the future look like for the folks out there? Well, I, I, I think that the, the amount of the use cases are infinite. And so I think that the most, cre the, the most creative companies are going to build a data asset and they're going to be able to innovate across that. And the applications are across that that will be able to build the unique companies that, you know, you see it like, you know, uh, uh, you know, we're at you know, RBNI, we're at Airbnb this week. There are companies there that are going to do banking. There are companies there that are going to do capital markets. There are companies there that have not been generated, that they don't exist today. And they're the people who we're going to be using in five years. So you and see that, new disruption coming out absolutely. of the woodwork. There's no question about it. Data has a competitive advantage and opportunity for startups too. One absolutely. application could explode. Abs oh, they will, absolutely is going to. So I, we, we're at the dawn of the beginning of, yeah. of uh, the yeah. changing of the guard in your mind. Absolutely, no question. New companies, new value, big data at the center of it. It's not just about the infrastructure and the storage, it's about what you do with it. Richard, thanks for coming on theCUBE. No, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal noise. We're here with the co-founder of Traceda. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.